Welcome to In Focus. I'm your host, Mixley Galarza. Today we have Kiana Raimondo, a member of CSUF's class of 2023 and a graduate of the College of Communications while at CSUF. She also worked with Titan Radio and was able to parlay this into her current position as a producer at the radio station KFI. Through KFI, she is able to fully utilize the tools she learned through Titan Radio, as well as demonstrate her persistence and work ethic in getting a job in her career field straight out of college. Today, we celebrate her work. So without further ado, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. And we're happy to have you here too. So, Kiana, let's talk about the start of your radio journey. You graduated with a BA in communications. Was it always your choice to have this major? No, actually coming out of high school, I thought I was gonna be a choir director. So I went to junior college um, up in Fresno and I was a vocal performance major seeking out my music AA for transfer. Thought I was gonna go to Fresno State. Um, I, got my, I got accepted into the Disney College program and moved down here. And while I was down here, I fell in love with just the entertainment industry, resort, tourism, and I that brought me to where I thought it was going to be, which was um, working at Disneyland as a career for the rest of my life and discovered uh, Cal State Fullerton as, and their entertainment and tourism concentration. And so... Um, when I moved back to Fresno to finish up junior college, I changed my degree to be communications for transfer, applied to Cal State Fullerton, got in, and started my um, focus in entertainment and tourism. Um, going from there, I fully thought I was gonna work at Disneyland for my entire career. I was gonna work my way up, do something with HR or PR, inter um, their entertainment costuming, what have you. And that just, n it never clicked with me. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I found um, Titan Radio just through Instagram. They were accepting applications. I applied, got in. And then that's what clicked was um, doing radio and being on air and syncing music and just talking. I love to talk. So that's kind of how my journey went from being a vocal performance major in choir and singing to now producing for radio station. Let's talk about the experience you gained prior to working with iHeart and KFI. What ways were you attempting to get involved in the radio field prior to your current job? Obviously, I applied to Titan Radio, got in. I was a pre-recorded DJ on Fridays and Saturdays for about four semesters. And um, I eventually, you know, f found, I don't know, I discovered my passion for like mixing audio and kind of just finding my niches here and there. Um, I was part of Tusk Magazine spring of 2022. And um, through that, I was able to kind of use the skills that I learned from Titan Radio, doing a lot of my pre recorded shows, to apply to a podcast called Talks with Tusk. And there, I was able to produce, edit, and kind of um, host that show. And it was only a couple of episodes, but that really kind of propelled me into like the idea of producing. Mm. So from there, doing Talks with Tusk, I eventually started seeking out freelance work and doing um, little jobs here and there for people that I knew or people that my fiance knew. And I would go and I would kind of set them up. I would have my own equipment, bought my own equipment, taught myself how to use it and set it up. And I would take it to these places and I would kind of get them started on starting their own podcast. So I initially did this podcast for Elite Fitness in Santa Ana and um, that kind of honed in my skills with producing and definitely producing for people that I wasn't used to talking to or um, being involved with like I would mm -hmm. here on campus. Mm -hmm. So um, eventually I figured out that 
you know, this is really fun. Just Mm -hmm. kind of being a manager and managing things and telling people, no, you're doing this wrong. No, you're doing this (laughs) wrong. As far as like speaking and talking and being an audio and the content that they're um, putting out there. And that eventually, um, sparked my interest in now wanting to take what I did from those freelance jobs and turn that into a career, whether it be doing freelance podcasting or um, getting into radio somehow. Mm -hmm. And initially, I thought I was going to do music radio. Mm -hmm. I had no idea I was going to get into news talk radio. Mm -hmm. Well, on that note, let's talk about KFI. So what are your day-to-day operations of your job and what are the hours like? So my day-to-day starts off super early in the morning. We have multiple shows throughout the day. Our first show starts at 5 a.m. and our last show ends at 10 Mm p.m. Roughly each show runs an average of three hours each. Mm -hmm. So let's say for instance, currently I'm working on the Tim Conway Jr. show that starts Mm -hmm. at 4 p.m. and ends at 7. I will start my day at about 10 o'clock in the morning Mm -hmm. and just going through the news, checking to see what are the top stories locally here in LA and Orange County and just in Southern California in general. And then using and grabbing that audio from other news sources and cutting it up and you, making sure that audio is usable for the host. So what's interesting is that our hosts are separate from news anchors and journalists. They have that background experience, but really the shows are about their personality and what they have to bring to the table. So it's very much their opinion, mm-hmm. what how they perceive the news. That's why we have our specific listeners. So mm-hmm. I will find news and content that is interesting for our hosts mm-hmm. to be able to, um, you know, provide that for him. So Tim Conway likes to have a lot of audio. I will go in, find those news stories, cut them up, put them in a folder. And then I will also send audio and links if I don't have the time roughly to our news anchor who will also be able to cut up audio if he has the time. And um, we all submit that in a folder. I then um, head to work and it's an hour drive to work sometimes from Fullerton. Mm -hmm. So, By the time I get there, it's about one o'clock. I'll start going live on some, or if some of the news stations are going live at the time, I will record those lives and then watch it through and then cut the pieces that I want. Mm -hmm. After that, I will set up a rundown, kind of who we have for guests, who um, who we want to book. Mm -hmm. So I will go and find some of the KFI journalists and reporters or a couple of people outside that we do know that has a close relationship to the host Mm -hmm. and we'll try to get them on and bring them on as soon as possible. Um, We'll also tag in the top headlines. So I'll Mm -hmm. write a lot of the headlines, print that out and get that to um, my host. Usually that's me, gathering all the stuff that I need to print out. If there are stories that don't have audio, Mm -hmm. it's printing out those stories and making sure he has that to use throughout the show. After that, um, sometimes I'm just checking the news again and again and making sure that if there's any breaking news that we're on top of that and that we're not missing out and that our hosts and plus the anchors all are updated as soon as we know that breaking news hits. Thankfully, we haven't had super hard-hitting breaking news here in Southern California, but if that time comes, that's when we all jump on to the, um, the news, making sure everybody is updated and that we're staying on top of things. Mm-hmm. After that, come 4 o'clock, the show starts, and we're able to um, really just – I'm in the – we call it air mix. It's kind of our little booth that we have and the hosts have their own booth and we sit in there and we have a bunch of TVs and I'm monitoring the TVs, seeing if there's any other news stories that are interesting, updating the folder with new audio and making sure that the host has everything that they need throughout the show. Mm -hmm. I'm not running the board. We have our own board ops at KFI that do a really, really great job. We also have our news anchors and our news editors that are 
that work with us, but they're on their own um, schedule. Mm -hmm. They really take care of themselves. I'm not producing for them. They are, um, the news editors take care of the anchors mm -hmm. and the anchors take care of themselves and are on in between the breaks. Um, I'm just really in the booth making sure that the show itself right. stays on track. And so once the show ends, that's the end of my day, mm -hmm. but that's every single day. And mm -hmm. depending on the show and what is needed, not all shows need audio. Mm -hmm. Not all shows use hard hitting news that is super important. Like a uh, Tim Conway Jr. show isn't super political. Mm -hmm. We don't really focus on politics. We don't mm -hmm. really focus on um, super sad stories of children in accidents and stuff like that. We try to look for the unique stories that we're, we're, the, we're the driving home hours. We're that four to seven. So when you're on the radio, you don't want to listen to something sad after work. You want to listen to something that's, oh, that's really interesting. So for that show, that's what we focus on. But the other shows, the content that they want is way different from the show that I am currently working on now which is the Tim Conway Jr. show. I see. So do you see yourself continue on as a producer? I do. I, um, while this was actually what I wanted to do from the get-go, I thought I would have to work my way up to being a producer. Um, I was fully, I, I tried applying for other jobs. Like I just wanted to get my foot in the door. So I did promotions. I was looking for more freelance work. I was looking to do board op work. And how I got the job from KFI is I applied to be a board op mm -hmm. and they didn't see that I was fit for that job, but they saw that I was fit to be a producer. So they passed my application along and I met the executive producer at KFI and she was the one that got me in. So producer was my top where I wanted to be. Now that I'm here right out of college, I feel like I need to, um, I don't know, hit the roof. <laughs> I don't know. There's, uh, there's a new level that uh -huh. I need to reach. Right. And, um, you know, doing this, I can see myself being a producer for a long time and gaining all those skills but what I would really like to do now is kind of bring those skills and teach it to the newer generation mm -hmm. because I, it's just radio is so important and I mm -hmm. love everything about it. Mm -hmm. So whether it be being a producer for the rest of my life or a program director, which is, would be another level that I want to hit. Mm -hmm. But um, I, would, I would love to teach about news and radio. Okay. Do you maybe see yourself getting in front of the mic anytime soon? Um, funny enough, I don't want to be a host, okay. but as a producer, I have the opportunity every show to okay. be able to be on the mic. Okay. So uh, Tim Conway Jr. likes to do these whip arounds all the time. Okay. And he'll just be like, oh, how much is a McDonald's cheeseburger nowadays? Mm -hmm. And everybody in the studio will answer a question mm -hmm. or for instance yesterday we were talking about how there's 911 dispatcher dispatcher shortage mm -hmm. in um los angeles mm -hmm. and i um he had asked a question like oh how long does it take to train a dispatcher mm -hmm. and so because nobody knew the answer i went ahead and googled it really quick and i just went on the air and told him the answer mm -hmm. same thing goes if he's telling a personal story and wants to know other people's personal stories he'll bring me into the conversation and want to have that conversation with me as well mm -hmm. so again we had this big storm coming or that came over the weekend mm -hmm. and we were talking about how to get up to northern california and since i'm from central california um I kind of know my way up there. Mm -hmm. So um, he asked me, you know, what freeway do you take? And I told mm -hmm. him I take the 99. And mm -hmm. so we had an entire segment just about the 99 highway mm -hmm. and how to get up to Northern yeah. California. <laughs> so while I don't want to be a host, I mm -hmm. definitely get mic time. Mm -hmm. What advice do you have for students that are looking to find a job in their chosen career field directly out of college? <laughs> I really, really recommend people hone their skills outside of school, 
find something that you really, really like to do mm -hmm. and just work on that skill. Mm -hmm. Cause I could have done Titan radio and that's all I could have done. And uh, just applying to different jobs, mm -hmm. it was, um, I couldn't see myself going very far if I just had Titan radio under my belt. Mm -hmm. It really took me going and honing my own skills and making mm -hmm. sure that I had the knowledge behind my back to be able to apply for KFI and to apply for any of the jobs that I mm -hmm. did do. And I recommend that students or people looking to get into radio, getting a job outside of school, really working on that and mm -hmm. really working on networking. Mm -hmm. Because I truly, I was a, I was a non-believer about networking mm -hmm. and I don't know why, mm -hmm. but once I started doing it, especially in the mm -hmm. KFI cluster, it, um, I saw that it really does work. Networking really gets you out there and really um, helps you, propel you into wherever you wanna go. So definitely gain skills and knowledge outside of school. Hone in those skills as best you can and find your little niche. Because I thought I was gonna be in music radio working for Kiss FM, Alt mm. Coast. I thought that's where I was gonna go. Mm. But I landed at KFI. I had no journalistic background whatsoever. I thought that I was gonna be 20 steps behind everybody else. But because I had all these other skills and knowledge behind me, it, it helped me and I, got into the work really quick. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't be discouraged ever. If you feel like you don't know where you're going, find what you love to do, stick with it, get those skills and go out there and network. Talk to people because people want to help you succeed. And the people at KFI wanted, want and still want for me to succeed, even though I'm six, seven months into my job, they're still encouraging me to do different things and to try out new skills. And um, they, they wanna see you grow because I'm coming in as the new generation of mm. News Talk Radio mm -hmm. and they wanna see what I can do next and how I can be the future of that. Yeah. What have been the most memorable stories you've covered while working for KFI? You know, my days go by so fast and there's so many, so many stories that <laughs> I go, I see every single day. It's hard to pick just one. Mm -hmm. um, really, I, um, it was back in, I want to say August or September is when the NFL season started. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why, but I was so, so excited for NFL to start. And the Thursday, the first Thursday game of the season, um, I was sitting in our little producer's booth mm -hmm. and we had the TV on and they were starting the game and everything. I was so excited. And Tim Conway Jr. was also a big NFL fan. Mm -hmm. And so he was talking about the news and stuff and we were sitting here watching the game in the in the producer's booth and he started talking about like, oh, the season's starting, how exciting. And just, you know, all the potentials that could be for the mm. season. And I was sitting there, I was so giddy and mm. so excited that I couldn't contain it. And my, um, at that point I was assisting his main producer, uh, Sharon Bellio. And she was like, Kiki's really excited about NFL. <laughs> And he goes, really, Kiki? Everybody at work calls me Kiki, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but he, um, he was like, really, Kiki likes football? And I was like, yeah, I'm a Miami Dolphins fan. And he goes, Miami Dolphins? And I'm like, yeah. And my dad's a Raiders fan and my mom's a Broncos fan. And that rivalry is pretty big. So it wasn't necessarily a story that was my favorite, but my favorite was being able to talk about my love for football and, every, mm. and all of that comes with it and all my, the stuff behind my family that I got to tell on air. Mm. And that was really, really fun. Oh, 
Oh, that, well, that sounds like a really like nice memory. And mm -hmm. thank you so much for joining us and sharing your journey. Thank you for joining us to discuss Kiana Raimondo and her amazing work. We also want to thank Kiana for joining us and sharing her journey. We wish her nothing but the best for her career. Until next time, I'm Mixi Galarza, and this was In Focus. Mm -hmm.